しますね。しまかぐれ。なるほど。なめかぶき。なるほど。それでもいいですよ。若いって。それでもかぶき。ナモゴロエベナモエベダイヤナモダラマエヤナモエサンガエヤナモハイジェアヤンドー。
Uh, let us cultivate um, the altruistic uh, motivation seeking complete enlightenment for the benefit of all other sentient beings and with that kind of uh, at least uh, contrived bodhicitta motivation uh, we should participate uh, in this discourse on Bodhisattva's way of life. <coughs> Uh, so we um, have already um, uh, you know, went through uh, chapter one uh, from uh, Bodhisattva Mahasattva Shandideva's uh, A Guide to Bodhisattva's Way of Life or Bodhisattva Char Avatar, uh, reflecting uh, the benefits of uh, cultivating bodhicitta or altruism uh, within one's own mind. And relatedly, we talked about uh, the qualities of uh, you know, those who have uh, bodhicitta uh, within themselves or the qualities of uh, uh, bodhisattvas. Now, in order for any one of us uh, to cultivate uh, bodhicitta or the awakened mind or altruism, uh, we must accumulate a uh, you know, lot of uh, merit, positive energy, as well as we have to purify our negativities. Uh, and uh, we usually call it uh, the practice of accumulation and uh, purification. Uh, so in chapter two, although it is uh, uh, you know, labeled as uh, disclosure of negativities or confession of negativities, but we do see in this chapter uh, what is called the seven essential uh, you know, practices or yala tumba, usually be translated as seven branch practice, and which would include uh, 
accumulating merit through making offerings uh, and uh, offering prostrations. So in other words, in this chapter, uh, we will uh, discuss uh, you know, practices of uh, accumulating merit and uh, purifying our, our negativities. ジュダ、ジュマリシ、ジュマリシ。ジュマリシ。ジュマリシ。ジュマリシ。ジュマリシ。ジュマリシ。ジュマリシ。ジュマリシ。ジュマリシ。ジュマリシ。ジュマリシ
You know, we should make offerings generously, you know, uh, so that we accumulate a lot of merit and also help to purify our uh, negativities. <laughs> So, something I left from the previous explanation where we talked about uh, uh, the importance and essentiality, I should say, to accumulate a um, lot of merit and purify neg negativities in order for us to be able to uh, participate uh, in a right for uh, taking bodhisattva vows and generating bodhicitta. 
And the example given is like say, if you want to dye your clothes with any color, first is make sure that your base uh, uh, piece of cloth is very clean so that it catches the color of the dye clearly. If your base clothing itself is dirty, you dye it, then the dye is not going to stick to uh, the base uh, you know, material. So in that way, if our mind is, uh, you know, uh, sort of, how should I say, uh, you know, um, a lot of negativities, you know, and uh, we lack merit, uh, then it is hard to generate uh, uh, bodhicitta. Uh, so that was from previous explanation. And uh, so the continuing, uh, you know, uh, with uh, what Gisela uh, uh, just said, uh, is that in this chapter two, which is simply labeled as uh, disclosure of negativities or confession of negativities, Dikpashapa in Tibetan, purifying negativities. Uh, you know, we find uh, the, in the beginning, uh, you know, they mention about uh, making offerings for accumulation of marriage and then doing prostrations. Usually in our seven essential steps or the practices, Yala Timba, uh, prostration comes first, right? And then offering. Uh, then confession or purification. But in this particular case, uh, before the prostrations, uh, you know, offerings are talked about. So that means I don't think there is a particular set order to do this practice. So we can do prostration first or we can do the offering first. But in this case, uh, you know, uh, offering uh, comes first. Uh, and uh, then we can do, uh, you know, uh, a prostration. And then we go for refuge. Uh, and uh, then uh, we do the purification. Yeah. And now in terms of making offerings, there are all kinds of uh, uh, offerings uh, we could make. Uh, one is called uh, shamta, uh, which means the actual offerings. The actual offerings means uh, that you could afford to buy, right? You pay your money, you buy the offerings, right? And so those are called uh, shamta. You uh, set them on the altar. These are the actual offerings. Yeah. But then it's also called uh, yijutul, uh, which is called imagine offerings, which means, you know, we can imagine, right, all the best of everything, uh, yeah, you know, that could be offered. So that's more like imagine offerings. You can multiply your offering through imaginations, which is called yiji too. And that especially becomes more important uh, in the context of tantric practice, right? Sometimes, you know, we can't really literally get the offerings uh, we want to make. And so you use your imagination. It's called imagine offerings, or mentally created offerings, literally translating, yi uh, And uh, uh, then there is also uh, what we call melam yi chuba, means aspirational uh, prayer offering. That means, you know, you aspire to be able to make uh, such and such offerings, you know. It's related to your aspirations, melam. How nice it would be if I could offer this and that and that. So that's like aspirational uh, prayer related offerings. Uh, then there is called Lana Mevichaba, unsurpassable offering or supreme offering. Yeah, and this only could be made by those on higher levels like Bodhisattvas on the spiritual grounds because uh, you know, they, you know, wish that uh, their you know, ability to be able to uphold the teaching and uh, to promote the teaching and their Bodhicitta mind, so they could really offer those things as a form of offerings, so which is really high level uh, you know, uh, uh, practice of offering. And then we can talk about, uh, you know, offering praises, right? We praise the qualities of the gurus, the Buddhas, the Bodhisattvas, right? So praise, you know, praise is uh, making offering. The yang, yang means tuning, right? When we, uh, how should I say, um, um, we don't simply kind of read the list of the Bodhisattvas' qualities, gurus' qualities, right? We just kind of chant it. You know, we sing the praises, right? That's tuning, the beautiful tuning, yang in Tibetan. So that is a melodious, you know, uh, tone. Uh, tuning is also, you know, offering. So among these things, uh, I mean, we could do actual offerings. Yeah, we could do imagined offerings. And we can do aspirational offerings. Now, we can't do the unsurpassable offering. Uh, and, but we could do the offering of praise and melodious uh, tuning, uh, you know, offerings, chanting. We could do all of those things. So going back to the actual offerings, uh, these are classified into three. Takpe Sunda means uh, offerings uh, with ownership, literally translating. 
Okay, that means, I mean, you buy offerings, you own them, right? All the owned by the people, right? There are ownerships attached to the offerings. Takbir Masumba, unowned offerings or ownerships with no, offerings with no ownerships, meaning the nature, right? The beautiful uh, environment, the beautiful ocean, the beautiful mountains, the beautiful forest, the beautiful ponds, right? That nobody owns. It's just nature's beauty. Flower fields, right, not owned by anybody, let's say. Uh, so those could be offerings as well. You know, uh, this is called uh, offerings without uh, uh, ownerships or unowned offerings, which is very strange to say in English, but uh, that's what it is. And then offering uh, one's body, libiwa. Of course, in the tantric context, sometimes we literally talk about uh, kind of a, I should say, giving your parts of the body, flesh, blood, whoever need it, if you are capable of doing that. But at this point, we are not talking about <laughs> that kind of a body offering here. But here, offering body means offering your services. Okay? Uh, that, uh, for example, we can offer our body to the gurus and buddhas so that they can use us in some meaningful way. Okay? It's, it's like, you know, I volunteer for you. Where is the sign up? You know, I'm going to volunteer for my gurus and buddhas because their whole interest is uh, to benefit sentient beings, right, uh, to promote the dharma. So I say, I'm a volunteer, so please use me in whatever way you can, because sometimes we know the buddhas are in their pure land. Okay? So they did volunteer, so to speak, here on the earth. So we said, I'm a volunteer for you, please use me. Uh, so that is also called uh, offering your uh, body. Rinjinsimdi <laughs> Rangie some Jevatan, some Tamas <laughs> Buyula Sanji Shazam Shuva Gangashi in the Kun Lung Yanta and the Shazusim Chematu Kun Lang Bashe 
Uh, we are on page 10, uh, chapter 2, uh, stanza 1. Uh, and the stanza 1 reads, In order to seize that precious mind, I offer now to the Tathagatas, to the sacred Dharma, the stainless jewel, and to the sons of Buddha, the ocean of excellence. And so this stanza establishes, uh, you know, the special uh, objects of refuge to whom uh, we will be making offerings uh, uh, to. And, uh, and also the purpose of doing that. In order to seize the precious mind, that means we would like to generate the fully awakened mind or the altruism, that too for the sake of sentient beings, and we want to be Buddha for their sake. So to generate that precious mind, Bodhicitta, I would like to make, you know, offerings to you, Tathagatas or the enlightened beings. Enlightened beings are the ones uh, who are free of all obscurations and defilements and endowed with all realizations. And they have the enlightened bodies actualized. And to Dharma, uh, which is very sacred and holy and precious. And Dharma consists of uh, two uh, dimensions or the aspects. Uh, there is the scriptural discourse aspect, and there are the realization aspects. So to both aspects of the Dharma, as well as to the sons of the Buddhas, meaning Bodhisattvas in this case, such as Manjushri and Avalokiteshvara. And as a matter of fact, to all objects of refuge who deserve or who are worthy of uh, objects of refuge, uh, I would like to make uh, you know, offerings uh, uh, to you. So as Gisela explained, you know, here the motivation is very pure, right? We would like to generate bodhicitta for the benefit of all sentient beings. And the purpose is also very clear. We want to generate this precious mind. And for that reason only, you know, we are going to make offerings to the special, you know, assembly uh, consisting of uh, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, or all others who deserve our, uh, you know, our refuge. Uh, and uh, uh, so then the, uh, what kind of offerings we are going to make uh, are, uh, you know, mentioned in the, the subsequent uh, uh, stanzas. Yes. <laughs> Tongue Joe Gone, so Joe the Manjelin, so the big John the Manjebe, Chuddy Chandan, but Liber Church, Liber Church, Chevas of us, some Utah town. Young Liber Church, you were Sanjay Tom Duji, Sambata, Sinjin Shed, the Yidu woman, Mobata, Cosum number Tabby. Tabetang <laughs> Kulungu 
So in the commentary, uh, you know, uh, because they also try to make reference to different commentaries, uh, uh, in the Namshe, which is exposition uh, commentary, it is stated uh, uh, that, um, you know, when we make offerings, uh, that we have to have pure motivation, right? Because we, uh, you know, do that out of, in this context, the altruistic motivation. We want to be Buddha for the benefit of all beings. That's a pure state of mind, okay? And so we're making offerings to the pure objects of refuge, pure in the sense enlightened beings, uh, you know, they are free of all, uh, you know, obscurations and they're endowed with qualities, you know, and we're making offerings to gurus, uh, to the realized beings. So they constitute pure uh, assembly, if you will. And the offerings that we make should also be very pure in the sense that we have not uh, procured them through some sneaky ways, you know. Geshe um, uh, you know, in the context of uh, refuge practice, uh, you know, talks about making offerings is important. Then he said that, you know, in order uh, to please the mom, if you uh, sort of kill the son and feed the mom, is the mom going to be happy? No. So like that, uh, you know, if uh, our offerings are contaminated, uh, this is not going to delight the Buddhas, right? The, the meaning of the offering, the Sanskrit word is punza or puja in modern version. Puja means, uh, you know, delight. So when we make offering, it has to be delightful to whom we make offerings, that Buddhas are delighted or pleased. But if we make impure offerings, they are not happy, not delighted. So that offering doesn't become a puja or punza. Right, and so therefore, you know, make sure that our offerings are pure, you know, the best of the qualities, you know, abundant as much as we can, and we have not procured them through hurting someone and through sneaky ways and through some kind of wrong livelihoods. You know, that's my footnote: wrong livelihood. <laughs> uh, in that way, yeah. <laughs> Pedro,那么，新疆的，呃，也说过两百多，欧洲人没多多，共两百，东村基地，你看那，啊，看这个可能，那，那，把这个两百，对嘛，对，不是说把他们这些，这些人两百，把这，出，上山的送了，连着那
practice, uh, you know, uh, uh, offering in the sense that, uh, you know, we can reflect on the qualities of enlightened beings or to whom we are making offerings and then feel so happy and joyful that I got this very rare opportunity, right? And a Buddha's appearance in the world or Buddha's presence is not everyday phenomenon. You know, it's very rare. Uh, and Buddha have infinite qualities, so do the gurus. And I have this really now opportunity, privilege to make offerings, and then we can do it very happily. Then we can expand our way of thinking in every possible ways. You know, you will find many ways to do positive thinking, uh, such as, uh, you know, whatever offerings I make, you know, may, you know, I don't expect anything in return, right? That's unconditional offering. Right, we don't uh, expect uh, the good effects of the karma to rub in upon myself. So that's why I'm doing my offering, right? Or that we expect something in return. You know, none of those uh, uh, what I mean uh, mindset limitations. We can just simply give out of pure heart and mind, as you would say. Uh, you know, thinking in every possible way to make our uh, you know uh, practice of offering uh, as extensive and as uh, uh, how should I say, outstanding and uh, pure as we can. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Uh, so some of the things we talk about is how we need to check our motivation and see that our motivation to make offering is pure, that offerings that we're making are pure, and to whom we are making offerings to are pure, right? And some scholars say, well, all these three purities, the qualities you talk about, these are related to making actual offerings, the offerings that you could literally make. Yeah. But other scholars say, yeah, it's not limited to that. Those qualities can also be equally applied to, right, uh, imagine offerings, right, other types of offering, unsurpassable offering. There is no limitation to that. So Keshala says that, that I think uh, those purities, pure motivation and uh, pure offerings, whether it is real or imagined, should be pure, no, nothing is contaminated. So he thinks that it could be applied to both. Uh, all types of uh, uh, offerings. Akaruda Yenla <laughs> <laughs>
so next uh, two stanzas, uh, uh, stanzas two and three read, whatever flowers and fruits there are, and whatever kinds of medicine, whatever jewels exist in this world, and whatever clean, refreshing waters, likewise gem-crusted mountains, forest groves, quiet and joyful places, heavenly trees bedecked with flowers, and trees with fruit-laden branches. So all of these are indicating, uh, or uh, I want to give an explanation, are what we call uh, you know, offerings uh, that go, go to make, uh, the, the, uh, the things which are not uh, attached to any ownership. What's in the nature available, right? If we are in a beautiful forest, we can imagine offering the beautiful forest with all variety of uh, plants and uh, nature, isn't it? If we are in a beautiful meadows with the flowers blooming like anything, we can imagine, because nobody owns that meadow, right? And offer that. Or we see beautiful waterfalls and you know, mountain ranges and whatever. We can just imagine offering these things because nobody owns them. This is all in the nature, okay? Uh, and uh, so those, those are what we call uh, the Thakwe Mausumba, unimagined, uh, no, sorry, unowned uh, you know, uh, offerings. Oh,对，他这个人来，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，这个是，
Uh, we are at the bottom of page 10 and top of page 11. Stanzas 4 and 5 read, Fragrances of the celestial realms, incense, wishing trees, and jewel trees, uncultivated harvests, and all ornaments that are worthy to be offered, lakes and pools adorned with lotuses, and the beautiful cry of wild geese, everything unowned within the limitless spheres of space. As Kishala explained uh, with a chuckle, he says that actually what we say is the best of everything that we can think of and imagine we can offer, right? I mean, we cannot uh, you know, keep on listing everything that's the best, right? Because that's just impossible. Only a few examples are given. Uh, for example, we can give the fragrances of celestial realms, right? When we talk about the smell or the scent more, uh, you know, it can be very natural scent that just like so, you know, sweet and beautiful. Or it could be artificially created scent, right? My food not, billion dollar industry scent there, right? Put not close. Um, so all that, you know, fragrances or the smell, that's naturally beautiful and that's artificially created beautiful, could be offered, imagine. 
And uh, so we can think of uh, wish-fulfilling trees that is supposed to exist in the 33rd uh, uh, you know, heavenly abode, three at three Sarah, not in a human world. And there are trees with uh, jewels uh, and fruits and things like that in the celestial abode. We can imagine if we could offering them as well. Uh, we can think in terms of uh, you know, beautiful lakes and beautiful uh, you know, uh, water bodies uh, that exist, uh, we could offer them. And we can imagine this water are not ordinary water, water of wisdom, so, right? We can think that way and make offerings, if you will. Uh, we can offer all these beautiful uh, mountains, you know, and which is included in the commentary is like even the Mount Meru, the king of mountains, encircled by the seven golden mountains and others. We can imagine if we could <laughs> offer them as well, you know. Uh, and um, uh, we can offer uh, the beautiful sandalwood forest. Sandalwood forest must smell like just amazing sandalwood smell. Uh, we can offer uh, beautiful meadows. You know, such a beautiful environment with the lakes and their water birds, you know, and they are beautifully singing their notes. And there's nobody really disturbing the whole environment. It can be so peaceful and just, you know, uh, one of a kind. So we can imagine all of those things and offer them, uh, you know, to, uh, the, uh, to the gurus, buddhas, dharma, and uh, sangha, and others worthy of our uh, making uh, offerings. No. <coughs> Or <laughs> Said <laughs> And what and um, so there's mention of uncultivated harvest. Uh, this is in the Buddhist cosmology, in the eons back, uh, wherever it all started. Uh, really, nobody has to cultivate uh, harvest. Everything was abundant naturally. It is said there was a sasha, some kind of cream on the surface. It's so flavorful, and you just you know, eat it and enjoy sustain. Then later, you know, things change and then people have started to cultivate the field. Okay, now you have to work a little bit, you know, to earn your, you know, livelihood. And that, that's how things shift and change. So we can imagine that and make offerings. And we can offer all kinds of uh, beautiful water bodies. We can put them to them as a, you know, water mandala, if you will. We can offer the earth mandala and they the best of everything. As you can see on top of page 11, it says everything unowned. So it means everything, right? That includes everything <laughs> uh, because we can list uh, each one item. And when we offer them, just don't make it very uh, like few or limited. Just kind of think of them filling the entire infinite space. Space is the limit, right, of, uh, for these offerings. And uh, so we can offer them. As Geshe said, how do we know what is uh, really 
uh, a pleasant thing. This only we can go with our own mind. Whatever you find is as pleasing and delightful and make you go, he didn't say crazy, but maybe I should add that, go crazy, happy. Yeah, that's you can offer. We don't know in reality that substance is good or bad, but in many ways, whatever reasonably, I should, maybe I should put it there, because somebody will say like, okay, then. Uh, anyway, let's not go there. Uh, so uh, don't take it too literally. But whatever reasonably human beings find pleasant and you know, things to offer, you enjoy it, you can offer that to, okay, uh, to, to, to the assembly of refuge. What is Cosunta Dungeon Kasa 这样的这样 那是。那你不要開面子。那那那我們是的,我們開面子,差不多。然後呢,有的要下去。不要現在去這個什麼的。那是。我們沒收。<音><音><音> Uh, we are on page 11, uh, uh, stanzas uh, 6 and 7 read, uh, Creating these things in my mind, I offer them to the supreme beings, 
the Buddhas as well as their children, O oh, compassionate ones, think kindly of me and accept these offerings uh, of mine. Having no merit, I am destitute, and I have no other gifts to offer. O oh, protectors, you who think of helping others by your power, accept these for my sake. Now, the explanation given on this is, um, as we are dealing with uh, mentally created offerings, each triva or imagined offerings, uh, uh, you know, I mean, this is an assumption that uh, we really want to make offerings to accumulate merit, but we really don't have almost anything to offer or we, you know, much to offer. So it's not like you could effort, but you kind of keep hide everything you have, right? I don't want to spend anything, but then I want to imagine making offering. <laughs> That's not what it is. And this is like saying, you know, I really want to make offerings to you, but because in my previous lives I did not have opportunity or did not accumulate merit, so in this life I find myself being destitute, means lacking, really abundant things to offer to you. But there are things available in the nature, beautiful. So uh, with my pure heart, I imagine offering this to you. I know you don't need them, but you care about sentient beings. That's what you care about. So out of your caring, compassion for sentient beings, please accept these offerings you know, uh, I'm making uh, to you and help me to fulfill my wishes. Well, that is the, uh, the, that's the rational behind this. Okay? So creating this thing in my mind means we imagine, right? Uh, you know, offering these things. Nice. <laughs> Chorjutane so this kind of making offerings is a Bodhisattva's skillful way to make offerings. And when Bodhisattvas make uh, you know, such imagined offerings or mentally created uh, offerings, uh, they reflect on uh, the emptiness of uh, <coughs> all the three, uh, you know, factors involved. In other words, the emptiness of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the assembly to whom you're making offerings, the emptiness of the offerings that you're making, and the emptiness of the one who is doing, making the offering. So that we reflect on the emptiness uh, the ultimate nature of uh, offerings and uh, then dedicate whatever uh, merit you accumulate uh, to become Buddha uh, for the benefit of all uh, sentient beings. No. 
Yani kaza ye de sizi sordu da sen ye de sizi sordu da lübü yüze onu şöze ye meca rola oye lübü yüzeyini mümkünlüm şeyine uvaşam olsa da de trelerim şey de lazım lüsü de bu var neyse düşü dalı yava yava sancı namda ki tuki si şarjı sema tağı ne Çocuk sebe dağı, çocuk sebe la, çocuk çocuğun da dağı ne, çiğ ne kap sosuru rongla onlar gibi var. Dağı se çocuk sebe dağı ne, çiğ ne kap sosuru rongla onlar gibi ise dağ rongi lülü muzu gibi dedem de kula dağı çevirse lapang ne ise. Dede şimdi tüyükten tüyük gün sebebim bu ayı. Ce simbaşın çoğu tüyükçe var, ki enamcı. Daha ki cevapsın lüğün dediğin yoğunsa şey var, çila, kişi de. Sevgü soğuk ise çoğu tutun ya var, mala ki. Tezi kubi ise, adı gözüm tüyükçe de de. Yani, चे चे नाम जे बंसो वसो बंस दे काशी ड्रेवे चे चंयो दे शिवर शेला बा जो शेवा वस शेवा वस वो वो देरे दादे लूबी आते हैं इसको ना लूबी आते बे दे करने से ना ऐने सोसो पे के साइड तो की कोई तो मारा अब सेस पे के योगों से न्यारो से तेरे कैमियस चे चे ता ये भी कर सिर्फ तब जी थों दे इन्हें ब्लू यो शेड दिस ये जा इन्हें शेरो नाम्स स्टेंजा एट रेड्स इटर्नली शेल आई ऑफर ऑल माय बॉडीज टू द कॉन्करर्स एंड देयर चिल्ड्रन प्लीज एक्सेप्ट मी योर स्प्रिंग हीरोस रिस्पेक्टफुली शेल आई बी योर सब्जेक्ट एंड द एक्सप्लेनेशन गिवन ऑन दिस इज Hypothetically or theoretically speaking, right? Uh, you have nothing, but you still have your body, right? This body belongs to you. <laughs> so in that situation, you say, I have nothing to offer, but I would like to offer my body. Now, I'm not offering my body in the sense like I offer it to you, and in return, I tell you, you can feed me and you can clothe me. Not that. I just offer my body in the service Right, and whatever you tell me to do to benefit sentient beings, I will do that. Please accept this offering of my body so that I will use my body to, uh, you know, serve, uh, uh, you know, sentient beings. And that's the kind of thing uh, we do uh, in the offering of the body in service. Nice. <laughs> लतें वो कोर्मन लास ये इन्हें वो मिल जाता है मैं बस ना नियम था बस दाग जीवन था जिन चूहे ऐसे चाव चोट जीव के ना जी काम वो लग यूं तो सुने सुने ना सेवा कोई ऐसे नहीं देना दुनिया की मिजी दे मिटा ला रोनी जाने लगा मेरे चाव चीवे जीवन चीवे तो भी से चम चम कौन तो चीवे सिंची नियम था बस ना लो यार Nekada tadu ki tüyükü ni jimba namba som so ki şüphe gizli ki şüphe gönü pemba da deva konu ne dövni pen dobarı giyin yün so çav çav la den yan rangı ngon yülü so tüyü so sabi dikba mege ve tadu mu yüllembar leba gönü tada gönço gün bağım so minun gün Yeah, the people do a touch or run door some yeah, some driver young kills or share in a theater not yet and the big bike make a lane um ille young tapper and now I give a day soon as you be told a so be a sugoni shot yes tell and now I chose it using tell me as a good job again turn to church change it दिवाल के मिले ले शें यां मिजी शें दिवाल लेंजे लेंजे तम शिंजे सो सोला पाजे मिजी वे 
Stanza 9 reads, Through being completely under your care, I shall benefit all with no fears of conditioned existence. I shall perfectly transcend my previous negativities and in the future shall commit no more. As I shall explain, uh, you know, the purpose of uh, offering our body to the three jewels is we said that now whatever they want us to do, right, to benefit sentient beings, we will use our body to render service, right, uh, uh, to others. And moreover, when we come under the care of the Buddha, when they compassionately accept our offering of the body, then we become very mindful of our uh, you know, actions because we do not want to disappoint them anymore. We are under their care. Okay? Uh, and um, so you don't want to bring uh, dishonor to the Buddhas or bad reputation to the Buddhas, right? Behaving in some crazy way. So, and you said, okay, so, and because of that, I'll find myself useful in helping others. By helping others, I make you even happy. That's what the Buddhas want me. So in that way, I will have no fear of samsara, conditioned existence. Okay? And through this kind of uh, serving others' needs and helping others, uh, I'm also able to purify my uh, you know, previously accumulated negativities, uh, and then I commit myself not to repeat my uh, negativities. So these are the benefits of uh, you know, offering our body to the three jewels and coming under their uh, care and uh, their uh, guidance and protection. Well, because the Oh, um, so as I shall explain uh, that uh, the purpose of offering body to the three jewels is in the sense we will serve whatever they want us to do. And uh, the three jewels only care about uh, the well-being of sentient beings. Uh, so we find ourselves useful uh, you know, uh, uh, in that uh, 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 service. And by doing that, we really delight sen uh, Buddhas because Buddha really want us to be beneficial to sentient beings. Uh, so there is an anecdotal story about... Uh, you know, Bhikshuni uh, Upal Palmo by the name, well, that's Tibetan translation, and uh, uh, I don't know the Indian name, but name is a name, so it's a Bhikshuni by that name. Uh, and uh, so she uh, rendered much service uh, to 500 uh, Bhikshunis or the nuns, uh, and through that kind of practice, uh, you know, she become an Arahat or Arahant, uh, attained uh, a Nirvana. And then Buddha one time uh, kind of applauded her. She said, I'm so happy uh, that, uh, you know, you benefited so many uh, bhikshunis. Uh, it is as if you didn't leave the whole job for me, right? But you also helped me to benefit sentient beings. So that's make Buddha happy. So like that, uh, when we kind of assist Buddha uh, to benefit sentient beings, uh, that makes Buddhas really happy. Yeah. 
So we are continuing with uh, imagined offerings uh, or mentally created offerings, uh, uh, literally translating, and uh, stanza 10 at the bottom of page 11 reads, uh, two very sweetly scented bathing chambers with brilliantly sparkling crystal floors and exquisite, exquisite so the pillars ablaze with gems, having canopies above a glow with pearls. Uh, I beseech the Tathagatas on the next page and their children to come and bath their bodies from many jewel vases filled with water scented and enticing to the accompaniment of music and song. So this is basically, um, <clears throat> you know, creating uh, the bathing chambers uh, for uh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. I think in ancient India, more so, the tradition is that when, uh, like, you invite the kings and you know uh, important people, uh, you know, you really first, uh, you know, kind of arrange for their bathing. So you have to have uh, befitting bathing chambers. Uh, and then you invite them home, and again, you wash their feet, right, in the Indian tradition. Uh, and uh, then uh, you later, uh, you know, uh, uh, how should I say, treat them. Uh, so in that kind of tradition, we are talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, offering ablution uh, to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. First, we need to build uh, the uh, shower room or the bathing chambers. <laughs> So, Geshe will just read that and he will stop there today and we welcome your questions and then we'll continue uh, next week. Ah. <laughs> so, um, uh, our Venerable uh, Managing Director said there were more uh, um, questions on this, but for some reason uh, we couldn't go up in this uh, iPad, and uh, so he had a few that I could see, so I will go through that. There's no way to, yeah, well, now I'm going to lose this one too. Uh, there's nothing here. I'm doing it so that you can trust me, otherwise look like I'm skipping the questions here. Hi, the translator. Uh, yeah. Just in case I have a question. But... Yeah, right, sure, yeah. Uh, so, uh, the question I have, uh, some disappeared into the space up there, I guess, or they might drop down someday, who knows. 
uh, if they drop down, I'll go back and read them, okay? Uh, first question, don't uncultivated harvest, uh, harvest unsown exit even now uh, on one of the other northern continents? This is the question. Uh, so Kishala thinks, yeah, it is possible. He doesn't know whichever continent it is. And maybe even today, you know, there could be uh, a, a world or environment somewhere uh, where there could be uncultivated harvest. Basically means, you know, that... Uh, you know, things just grow on their own. Nobody is plugging the field or right, fertilizing it and watering it, anything. It's just, you know, by nature, <coughs> evaluable. Uh, next question. <coughs> uh, but in order to have such pure and strong desire to make offerings, even though poor, poor one needs to have already accumulated tremendous merit, isn't it so? Okay. That under this figure, sir. That again, again, Allahabad di, kala wada. That is chhaba bhiye dilwa ge. Kulon thaba da dilwa ge. And chhaba pindi shukchhe bhiye bata. Chhaba zang bata bhiye se chhaba dilwa ge. That ngazo that ngye, that di ngye that dawa ta ge mato. That kya ngye ma asana masa asana. That ngaz ke, that ke uje ke piye mindo la dilwa ge. La bhi na chhe piye or dilwa ge. Kulon thaba thane. So di kala ko piye ye ba sanga. And this son of you ever thought about a vessel, the question of Jesus, what the Dutch appear as Rago or Rasgo, Rogan. Son of Zan and Mabel Takalanzina, I didn't have a Marawasgo. I didn't know what it was. She was a dal, she was a Jasabo did a pugo or what? No, Jasabo did a pia missing with the Tan Pia Missy over. No, sir. Jasabo Pia Missy, he did a few years. And he has the last one with Jasabo Sameda, Lumsu Shimbo did a bear, Kazi Pugu did a Bia Missy. No, sir. Gisela says, you know, uh, you know, the way we should understand uh, the things we already talked about is it's not like uh, you don't have anything to make offering with pure mind or motivation. Uh, but uh, the way it's, uh, the stanza probably is a reference to that, that I, I'm a destitute with nothing to offer. It means that, uh, you know, I don't have as much offering uh, abundantly and beautifully as I would like to, right? I have something to offer. So therefore, I'm engaging in more imagined offerings, right? Because I can imagine offering anything. So that's more of that. Yes, you have, you know, certain you know, things to offer. Maybe you have certain amount of merit, right? That you're able to do that. But still, our offerings are limited. So we don't have the ability to make extensive, uh, uh, you know, offerings and pure abandon. So that's why, you know, we are telling Buddhas, out of your compassion, please accept all these imagined offerings in abundance, because what I have is very limited and I don't have much, you know. Uh, that is the sense. Um, next question. Uh, why should one have no fear of samsara upon having offered one's body in the service of the Buddhas and sentient beings. That <laughs> And uh, so the uh, explained um, 
but most sincerely offering our body to Buddhas in the service of others, uh, what we are saying that we are going to completely trust the Buddhas, rather right? part refuge, and we will do what Buddha tells us to do, which means we will do uh, you know, uh, positive actions, benefiting sentient beings. When we do positive things, there's no reason why we should fear uh, samsara. I mean, that is the rationale behind this, okay? Um, let me go down. The recommendation is to spend half of our income earnings monthly, yearly, or half of what we own or are worth. Uh,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,呃,
Uh, so, no, so, uh, so I think that we need to make a correction, I think uh, Kishala said himself too. And um, in order to receive the vows, Bodhisattva vows, it was recommended that we spend half, uh, actually, you know, that was, uh, you know, misspoke by Gishala and mistranslation by me. Uh, it is not half, one third, actually, one third of our uh, whatever we have. Uh, and so, and what that entails is that, you know, because we let go that much, uh, you know, then we are able to accumulate a lot of merit to that extent, right? That, that's what it is. So it's one third, not half of uh, uh, the uh, resources or uh, that, yeah. Uh, okay, so some of the questions disappeared in the cyberspace and uh, so they are not dropping down. Uh, b but uh, maybe next time you can ask them, right? So we will have a chance to uh, respond to them. Yeah. One, one, one third of what we own. Uh, one third of 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 we own. Yes, one third of what we own. Yes, one third of what we own. Yes, one third of what we own. Before we said half of what we own, but that was a misspoke by Gishala and mistranslation by me. <laughs> Uh, but one third, yes. So we'll stop there today and we will do Manjushiri prayer, uh, Song Rinpoche, Long Life prayer, and other dedication verses. Kange Lode, Dimye Dinde, Nindar, Namda, Rabzebe, Jinye Dungu, Jishin, Zijin, Yijin, Loba, Lem, Kanda, Zibe, Zara, Mabe, Mendon, Dungu, Giz. Rosa Omarabazan so one day, Changju, for Happy Mother's Day, Sanjo Semba Kana Sush, Teda Gwengi Melan Dojo Ji, Kewa Gwendo Yangda Lama Da Deme Chege Bela Lon, Sada Lange Yunden Rabzo Nen Doji Shange Goba Nyu Dojo.